So just like being a journalist is all about language arts and history, it's all about being a time traveler for both science and geography. I just felt like that was all about being an explorer. So that is what we are. We are explorers when it comes to science and geography. Day two of our first week of on school and we are still in the training phase. So Kendall's been um, taking all the photos today. The kids are currently supposed to be outside and it's a really, really nice day, except for the fact that it just finished raining. So, <laughs> all right, so let's recap. Today is unit study day. In our normal schedule, we pretty much work on a block. I've said this many times before. So we really focus in on being a journalist, and being a problem solver on the first part of our block and then the second part of our block which means just an alternating day we focus on any unit studies so we had started our meat science unit a little bit before we kind of made the jump or transition we started off with some chemistry and jumping into studying volcanoes so we just jumped right back in where we were before so yeah it's a science day and what way to explore the world of science than be a true explorer <laughs> I got lab coats for them and goggles for them and the first thing I did was started with this you guys have seen this many times before this Ada Twist big project book for stellar scientists and we've actually done um, a couple of these pages before but I thought it would be nice to go ahead and start off with a nice little science crossword puzzle and they used some washi tape to highlight the words so they did that for a little bit which was nice just got them working together for the day once we finished up the crossword puzzle we moved on to the next little project type of thing for the day which was building a question tree we've made question trees before we never do them the same I'm trying to get us to challenge ourselves to make a question tree in different ways but um, inside of the book it just explains that scientists are curious and that one question leads to another question that leads to another question and that is what the true nature of a scientist is so we made a question tree I had the kids uh, try their hands at um, cutting out strips of paper so that they could write down their questions on the tree and then we used a piece of green construction paper and a piece of brown construction paper and built our tree and then added on our questions. They really did a great job coming up with different questions and the topic this time around was volcanoes. So we casted these are volcanoes and the next step is to paint them and then after we paint them um, we are going to erupt them. So in the meantime it is you know the perfect opportunity to just have them ask questions and things and so that was what we did with the question tree the beginning of the day was just as planned um, we started off with our morning walk leading into devotions they fill out their weather report um, we just kind of go along that same plan but um, the biggest addition in our rhythm has been them filling out their portion of their schedule which was nice so they had different ideas for things that they wanted to do today and they added them to their schedule we're also really getting in a rhythm of always having our journals out after we do any reading if we're doing any science any history and anytime they want to pull them out the goal is to have them um, visit their journals at different parts during the day so they can keep a nice account of some of their thoughts and questions and ideas and things like that. So I think we're starting to get into a good rhythm of keeping our journal out and writing in it, which is really, really good. What? She's got a journal and too. Savannah tends to, instead of writing in her journal as if she was writing to a friend, which is kind of the vibe that I was going for, she tends to put a lot of copy work inside of there. So if there are things um, like inside of her devotion, she will just kind of copy the same things that she's read inside of her devotion. And at first, I will admit I was a tad frustrated because I had I was very tempted to just you know, explain to her how she should write in her journal. But I resisted that urge and I'm really glad that I did because now I notice today I see it in a different light and it is fine. Like copy work is really, really good. Um, it helps her to work on um, her spelling, her punctuation, and all of those other things. So I am just fine with her um, using her journal uh, mostly for copy work right now. You taking more pictures of me? <laughs> You saw them in your camera. <laughs>
<laughs> so I think what he's learning so far by just picking up the camera um, is he is learning um, how the flash affects the photo. I like the flash. Yeah, he's working on his focus. What's really nice is that I try to really mimic everything that they are participating in since we're trying to participate in things at the same time. So if they're doing science, I'm doing something science related. If they're writing, I'm writing. If they're reading, I'm reading. So yeah, my general rule of thumb, I do have a couple of printables that I have made for them, um, like journal prompts type of deal. Anytime they are to come across something that they want to research and explore a little bit more. But in general, uh, how I presented it to them, um, other than simply being an explorer when it comes to science and when it comes to geography is um, and the regular observing taking notes and all of that stuff is to ask themselves those questions who what when why where how yeah so they know that that is our main goal um, when it comes to being an explorer yeah and I'm just taking all of the notes I'm trying to observe the things that they're most interested in as we talk about volcanoes as we talk about the scientific method the different types of sciences I know for sure Kendall is all into cooking so he's going to be doing a lot more kitchen science that type of deal so my goal is just to take my planner out again today and um, jot down the things that I observed the things that they leaned more towards and the things that they kind of were a little bit disinterested interested in. We did um, actually finish another read aloud. This is actually a read aloud. One of the only read alouds I think that we never really completed was the lifters. Um, we started it several several months ago and just had um, a few more chapters to finish and I think I had to return the book to the library and um, didn't end up finishing it. So I got the book again so that we could go ahead and finish it. So we finished that today and the kids were really excited about that. So I think that the next book we are going to do for my read aloud time is The Secret Zoo. So what are you guys reading? Um, we have our own individual uh, quiet reading time books. Uh, we normally rotate between one to three books a piece that we're reading at any given time. And then I have a read aloud that I'm responsible for reading um, in a certain block of time with the kids during the day. And then Brian also has a read aloud time with the kids, which is really nice. And then we have bedtime reading. So there's a whole bunch of um, little reading times that are kind of pocketed in uh, throughout the day, which is nice. Geography's always been extremely natural for us. Uh, one of the main things that I did was keep maps everywhere. I have them wherever I can find a spot to put them. I'd actually really love to cover the entire wall with different um, maps, but my main thing is our two main maps on our wall. Then I have like three, four, five sets of scratch maps. I have about two puzzles a world map and a usa map then they have maps inside of their binders maps inside of their notebooks globes that are inside of their explorer work boxes um, and over the last years we've really just tried to focus in on keeping it before them and seeing what they remember and surprisingly they've remembered quite a bit i think what i will move into next besides just more exposure to more of the maps and always pointing out um, the different places in the world, the cities, the countries, the continents. I can't remember where I saw this, but I thought it was a brilliant idea was to have them start drawing maps of their own. So maps of the United States and maps of the world and seeing how much they can get right. I think that's just something we will all work on together. Just learning how to start from the outline of the world map and the outline of the USA map and then filling in all its pieces the best that we can. Up until now, we've all also use the Good and the Beautiful's um, geography cards that come along with their language arts and we use them often on one side is labeled and the other side is not and so the kids really enjoy quizzing one another um, with those and from those they have learned quite a bit um, of the state that's a go another thing that we are going to do is just keep 
just keeping track using our scratch maps. We have one set for the places that we study. We have another set of scratch maps for you guys for us to be able to mark off um, where you all are from as you let us know, which is so much fun. And then we also have another set of scratch maps for the places that we are going on the tour. Also, about the tour, there's a <laughs> whole video that is getting ready to come about the tour and how the plans are evolving. Of course, current state of affairs has made uh, our plans move around quite a bit, which I am okay with. I think that if I had um, super solid plans that were completely mapped out like I wanted to in the beginning, this probably would have thrown me for a major loop. But because I didn't and because I wanted flexibility and true adventure above all else, I think I'm good. So I am going to talk in that video about how those plans are shaping up and that is going to be coming soon. So what else did I want to say? All right, so I'll show you a few things that I did pick up because like I said, I just like to feel, I like the kids to feel like they are in that role because because to me, pretend play is really exciting. So I want to always move along with that in mind. Um, and so I choose to spend funds that we have instead of on more curriculum on things that can really get them excited and make them feel like they are a scientist, a doctor, an architect. So for our science adventures, this is what I picked up. I got them lab coats, of course. Um, which are super cute. I also got us some goggles, a set of Erlenmeyer flasks. Now these are glass and I know um, you can either get them in plastic or glass and most of the time I opt for the glass ones because um, I want them to last for long and I feel like my kids are at the age where they are able to proceed with caution and care and that's what I want them to do so it really helps them to be a bit more careful when they're doing things if um, they know that it's glass around so um, it hasn't been a bad choice for me so far so we're going to keep going with it also have um, a set of beakers I got petri dishes plastic squeezers I have like a pack of tons of them just so we can use in different ways I also got these test tubes that I thought were going to be a lot bigger but it turns out um, they weren't <laughs> now these are actually plastic these um, these called pipettes and these are plastic and then I got this stand for their test tubes because they're definitely gonna need this now what I'm gonna do with this I'm not actually sure <laughs> so I do have a Pinterest board and um, I did dedicate a page in my journal to a bunch of different ideas and ways that we could jump into a few science projects together so that's exciting but again I don't want to force too many things on them I just want to kind of suggest things here and there and if we're all interested then we do that thing together and then I observe and take notes and um, notice some of their strengths and their weaknesses and see where that leads us so I like having open open-ended materials like this um, instead of having kits I feel like even though it feels really challenging because it absolutely does for me um, I feel like it puts a demand on us to think to think more about the ways that we can use the tools that we've been given if that makes any sense so I'm excited to see what we end up doing with all of this. I do know that I want to do, um, I've seen a density lab that uh, they used Erlenmeyer flask with. So I'm excited to do that one with them just to start. Yeah, that's really all the plans that I have for science right now. Who, what, when, where, why, how. <laughs> that's basically how we're starting things off with this whole science slash geography explorer job that they have been given so another day where we've jumped into um, another subject turned back into real life adventure and we will see how it goes as it grows so today was a good day it was a good day <laughs> I just have to keep going and I know that it's going to get better and better. I will say that with our plans being moved around um, with the tour, uh, it did get to me a little bit, but I know that um, it is all going to work out and I'm going to do some other things to continue to prepare until we're able to really get out and adventure like we want to. So I am going to write my wrap up for the day in my planner and then try to get a little bit of editing done and work done and uh, 
get ready for tomorrow. Remember that life is so very full of lessons, so we live and we learn. Thank <laughs> you.